Are we live? Yep, we're online. Should be. Hey guys, this is yet another weekly stream of Spire Sorcery. As you can see, we're not even able to start on time. So every time we say it's going to be at 4 p.m. our time and then we push it to 4.10, which is probably the same thing that happens with the game. Uh, we've been building a new version of the game and uh, there's a couple of things that we want to show you today. So this week, the good news of this week is that we um, think we found uh, a great person to work with in terms of events. So in addition to the current team, there will be one more person working on the events and helping us move faster with those. Uh, and that's a pretty essential part of the game. So the sooner we complete a few hundreds of those, the sooner we can uh, go into a closed beta. Uh, but that's the invisible progress. I mean, we could, you know, there's been meetings and discussions and, and so on, but uh, it's not something I can show on the stream. Uh, the other news is that we've been working on magic energy, and the next week's block will detail the rules for that. Um, anyway, to go back to what we were saying, there are two good news. One good news is about the team. We hope that uh, starting from this week and the coming week, we'll be moving faster with the events because we now work with a new person uh, who's joining our team uh, externally uh, to script the events. Uh, that means we will move significantly faster towards closed beta because hundreds of events make uh, a, a big portion of what the game is about when you launch. Uh, the other news is that we've been mostly spending time, uh, aside from the creatures, we've been mostly spending time on There is a sound, okay. So we've been mostly spending time on uh, magic energy. Now, magic energy will be more detailed in the blog post uh, next week. Uh, generally, this is something, uh, I don't know, maybe we can go to the screen. Uh, uh, yeah, just launch the campaign. Um, so, so here in the middle of the screen, you can now see a new number. Uh, here it says 42. That's the, uh, uh, each person, each character in the game has a different uh, potential for magic energy and you will know it if you know their concentration uh, skill if you don't then you won't uh, so different characters have different uh, magic energy inflow some will be strong mages some will be weak mages the same is also relevant for your own mage character uh, depending on how you generate you can get a stronger or weaker mage and this is the amount of magic energy that you generate or a character generates a day. Uh, so once a day you get this boost that you can then spend. Uh, you spend magic energy on spells and rituals. And within the spire, uh, you use magic energy to upgrade uh, certain rooms. Now, once we load now, you'll see how that looks like. Uh, outside of the spire, which produces together with your mage character a uh, pretty good amount of energy every day, you can get magic energy from other sources. So later in the game, you'll be able to discover certain places of power. And if you send your disciples there and they perform a, a ritual, then that source gets connected to your spire and your supply of magic energy increases. The other thing is uh, idols and monoliths, which are the uh, uh, ruins or the, the remaining ruins of the older times of the Age of Mages. And those work like batteries. So you can find an idol and unlock the magic energy from that idol, but that's a one-time event. So the idol will not give you more energy every day. The idol will just give you whatever it stores. And what that means is that you may want to have uh, more capacity to store magic energy back at the spire. So before we jump into the global map, let's just quickly go to the magic energy screen. Um, yep. yep. So here is a work in progress. It's a concept that we're trying to figure out how to show uh, in an understandable and still visual appealing way the magic flow of your spire. You have the uh, this chamber, uh, this 
magic energy concentrated area where er everything is connected and you can see who produces the energy and who consumes it so, so, so for so now mm -hmm. here we have zero so currently we have zero and three five three is the total amount of energy that your spire at the moment can hold now below you see call of the spire with a little spelling mistake as <laughs> fires not capitalized, uh, which is how much you spend every day on trying to recruit disciples out there in the world. Uh, and then you see the consumption. So, so 50, I think, is what five characters in the spire currently consume, 10 per person. The more disciples you have, the more you spend on maintaining contact with them. Uh, on the other hand, that gives you visibility for your disciples on the global map. So when you're sending someone and they're traveling across the new lands, you will not be able to see what they see, but you will always be able to see them traveling. And if they uh, get hurt or if they die, you will see this immediately. Because your mage is connected to the disciples in a certain magic way, like, you know, we're all connected to our dogs or dogs connected to us. I don't know. When I, you know, when I feel down, my dog goes over to me and uh, somehow she feels it, although she's not spending magic energy on that. Uh, then you see the chart on the right side, and that is meant to help you to better manage uh, your magic energy. Uh, because it's so flexible, it's so versatile, it's also very tricky to use it in the proper way. Uh, how do you spend magic energy except for the call and uh, maintaining contact with your disciples? You also use magic energy to produce items. If you don't have wood or if you don't have iron, you can still magically produce the missing resource. So you will not be stuck looking for some resource around the map. You can always substitute it with magic, but it's pretty expensive. So that's something that you can use for pretty much everything. Um, it's no. like a duct tape. It will help <laughs> you in any situation, you know, if you cannot fix it in a proper way, you can always duct tape it and it will work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we also discussed whether or not you're able to magically produce, for example, wood and then sell it on the marketplace for money. Uh, and, 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 and indeed you can, but that's pretty stupid because money is money. Money is not essential. You know, using money, you cannot really produce uh, uh, some item because uh, you'll have to go to the market and buy something for the money, then bring it back and then use it. Whereas magic is universally, you know, it's, it's, it's a solution for pretty much everything. So, but, but magic is precious because you will need it for rituals, uh, for spells or whatever. Someone is sick, you need to heal them. You'll need magic energy to uh, cast the proper spell. Now, on the left side, and I think we can go maybe to the skill screen of someone, um, we we so here in the middle you see 61 that's the magic uh, energy of that specific character uh the numbers are not final it's just being fine-tuned uh the other thing we added this week uh, are character states so if you look at the top left corner uh you see the big heart so that heart is the uh, uh, health stat of our mage character and one is really bad you can see that the whole potential is probably what Three? It was four. Four, <laughs> four. <laughs> it okay. It was not so healthy <laughs> when we started the campaign, but for now... Okay. A and, and, and now, uh, out of four, three are gone and one remains. Now, the mage cannot get back the health. Other characters can, but the mage cannot. So that's pretty much a lost campaign right now. And now we see the state. For some reason, one, two, three, four disciples are happy. Uh, the fifth is quite excited, is really happy. But at the same time, everyone is starving. I don't know why. Maybe they want to lose weight. Maybe they are so happy because they're losing weight even though they're starving. And then the reason that the mage is so weak is that the mage is sick. So you can see the red hat, and this red hat is, is illness. It's a confirmed illness. When you have just a symptom, uh, maybe hallucinations or a headache, it's a different icon. So I don't know if you can sort of run this through the simulation and see some other states, uh, depending on what's in the game. Mm, we can try. Um, depends if it will work or not. Some updates on the global map also. Uh, 
and, and a word of what is coming in the future. The night will be shortened. Okay. Yeah. We all agreed that in the night, disciple, uh, your mage goes to sleep, and then while the mage sleeps, you cannot manage the spire. It was a long discussion, but we ended up with this decision. So what I'll you'll see in the next week's version is that the night will just pass us one thing. It already implemented in a way that we are s uh, like increasing the speed of the game during the night, so you're not waiting uh, and wasting your time. Uh, so game passes much quicker because no events happening most of the time. But if there will be some important events, they'll happen even during the night, and you'll be woken up from your sleep and you'll be required to... Yeah, with some penalty that, that uh, yeah. And now we have, we had a, we experienced a fantastic event that didn't <laughs> have a choice. <laughs> yeah, it was an uh, event <laughs> of your uh, death failed campaign. Yes, but uh. it lacks illustration and any text to explain what really happened. So okay. our mage had only one uh, health point it's left another, it's, and an, it's another weak mage i mean come on it's what eight can, can we get a mage with yeah, 10 or 12 12, 12 is good let's take 12 12 is good Mila was 12. Hit but points. the magic energy at 49 is pretty weak uh at least at least this mage is healthy she'll live longer for sure <laughs> yeah before she uh you know dies of starvation or something uh so the states are in we still have to figure out the best way of showing the states in the game and the disciple list. Uh, th there could be potentially uh, symptoms and sickness and wounds. Uh, you can be poisoned, you can have some magic effects applied to you, you can be happy or unhappy, uh, you can be hungry, you can be tired, you can be overslept, or you cannot be overslept, but you can be lacking sleep, tired. Uh, so there is a bunch of stuff to show, and we have to find a way of, of showing all those states next to the character's portrait. Uh, we're, not, we're not so sure about that. Um, let's, let's take a look at this screen for some more changes. So, so in addition to progress bars, you can see on the stats, for example, health is 12 out of 20. So you see what is the maximum and what is the minimum. Um, the interest icons are now more prominent. So if you look at domestic magic, there is two green uh, triangles. Means that this person is really interested in this. And now this icon is bigger, so it's more obvious. The same for disinterest. If you look at their artificing, uh, that person is absolutely, well, not absolutely, but just quite disinterested, I'd say. And then, uh, the if you look at how the skills are shown right now, there is a big change. Uh, let's take a look at, for example, artificing. So that's two out of three. Uh, two is now the practice, and three is the theory. The reason for uh, swapping this is that uh, most times you want to know what you can do. Not what you know, but what you can do. So in this case, uh, your practice is two and your theory is three, and that means that the success rate of doing something is determined by two and not by level three. Um, so basically, real world experience is at the first place, like a m most important uh, stat to look at, uh, and theory shows how much can you invest in your practice. Oh, so you can attempt to do something having no practice, but having theory, uh, but that will have pretty high uh, failure. Yes, yeah, there right. will be always a failure chance if you're trying to do something that's higher than your practice. So, so, so let's look, for example, here at astrology. Uh, we have theory at level three and practice at zero. Uh, that means that you can still put up your practice up three levels. Or if you look at an alchemy, your practice is one, but there's two more levels that you can gain by practicing. And looking at this character, a good thing to do would be to go and do some alchemy until it's 3-3, three, three, and then move the theory up so you can learn more stuff. But at that moment, it, it makes a lot of sense to do practical things. 
for but for literacy, there yeah. is opposite case. Uh, it has equal uh, theory and practice, so it shows that you need to increase theory so you can push the level of practice even more. Yeah, with literacy 3.3, three, what means that giving this character more practice with books will not give you any advantage. Uh, it's it's basically no matter how much you, you, you practice literacy at this point, you will not get any results. Uh, so for literacy with this character, it makes sense that you go to the library and just get them to study more stuff. Uh, so we're trying to tweak this interface a little bit to make it easier to understand what your priorities are. Uh, as we started using the screen ourselves, we ran into some uh, stupid situations where you make a decision which is not efficient uh, because you thought that you, know, you took theory for practice and the other way around. Now we don't really have any states on any of the characters, so I don't know if uh, you want to run the simulation further and see how that goes. Mm, I want to, but <laughs> I cannot. Our second campaign isn't working because, ah. of course, we have bugs. <laughs> 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 okay, let's go then back to global map and just highlight some changes there, and that's about it. Um, let's take a look at this. Yeah. So, so here, here, here is the updated way of uh, showing uh, sources of different items. Uh, there's clay up there on top, and then there's something else for which we don't have visuals yet. And this is the thing, iron. Iron and coal. Yes. Coal, and then down there. So below. the main thing is. Uh, you'll be always looking for the intersections of the areas where you can gather stuff. So you'll be able to gather all at once. For, for example, if you're uh, sending your disciples to mine different uh, ores, I it's better to send them I on a cross sections where you you'll be able to gather all the elements at once. So you won't need to create a couple different groups for different resources. They'll be able to gather everything in the area you'll send them. Because the most important, I mean, th the biggest investment you make is equipping the group, sending the group somewhere for a time, and then waiting until the group comes back. And if you can send people to uh, collect two or three resources at the same time, then this is much more efficient than just going and getting one thing and then coming back. So, so looking at the map and figuring out places that can yield you multiple resources is becoming more and more important as we work on the map. Uh, we're still not done updating the map. The, uh, the visual look of the map will change. It'll be different. I think uh, we've posted a couple of concepts on the Discord. Yeah. It's just to say that we're not like, this is not final. We're not locking this in, but we're moving to that. And what we realized is that when we started working on the global map some months ago or years ago, <laughs> uh, initially we wanted to be very clear about the borders. So you could see this is the forest, this is the hill, and this is the river. But now we see that it doesn't really matter much because you're not so much looking at the forest or the plain, but you're looking at the sources of different items. So you're so looking and thinking, can I mine coal here? Uh, yeah, we're we're planning to blend the edges more, but we are not like obliterating the separation of uh, regions at all. They will be clearly separately like because of the movement. They yeah. can be recognized, and it'll look different. So it won't be just one plain area without anything that you can. Uh, it's just that there's less there's less impact. I mean, there's less importance on this right now, except. It affects how fast you move, but since you do not control your characters so precisely, you know, telling Each them step, go left, yes. go right. No, what you'll do is you'll tell them go here. Can we send someone somewhere? Mm, nope. Okay. It's broken okay. campaign, so we okay. can uh, okay, we can reload. Yeah, but since you will not micromanage the parties, then it doesn't really matter as well because your party will try to find their own way, uh, however they like. Now, one last thing about. Uh, magic energy that I forgot to say is that you can overspend it. You can go negative. And if a character goes negative, 
then the health goes down. In uh, a disciple, the health goes back after some time. In, in your mage, it doesn't. So overspending magic energy on behalf of your mage is pretty suicidal. Whereas overspending from one of the disciples is okay. I mean, it's doable. You will live. That, that person will rebound. Uh, and since you do not control them directly, but you can just say, hey, you know, I'd like you to start a ritual, uh, they can also refuse at some points. And depending on their obedience, they can say, sure, I'll go and, you know, run myself into red, but I'll do it. Or they'll say, you know what, probably not. Uh, let, me, let me rest. The other thing that we've done is we agreed that characters now will sleep for six to eight hours at the same time. We tried doing uh, some early rises and late risers, and that just created a lot of complexity that we didn't want at this time in the game. So every character in, 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 in the Spire at this time will go to sleep around the same time as you set in the schedule. Whether or not we need to introduce characters who like to sleep later early, we'll see once that launches. Um, the other thing is that by default, the working hours are now at uh, something around uh, 10 hours per day. I think more, like 12 to And a uh, mm. couple hours of free time. So yeah. in total, it will be something around maybe 14 hours of uh this is not this is not an office in 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 the modern times. So so while you sleep six to eight hours, the majority of the day the disciple is expected to work, and then there is a couple of hours of free time. If you think you can achieve more by giving them more free time and making them happy, you know you can try. But uh, originally the default setting will be pretty uh, pretty harsh. Um, can we uh, look at the mountains down there? Okay. Uh, currently, mountains aren't possible, so it they doesn't contain any resources, <laughs> for example, like ores or anything. Uh, so it's a big obstacle for you. So you'll be always trying to go around. You cannot go through the mountains for now. Uh, it's also good because no one can can come visit you from that side. Uh, can we can we take a look? Wha what is this route? It's a hidden route. It's a delicious. I think it's delicacy, so uh -huh. you can go and gather some, if you're lucky. Will actually someone go? Yeah, okay, okay. There's a party going out, sleeping in the night time. Iron. And they've arrived. Okay, good. I think something happened with the list of disciples that we have on the left side. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something, something happening. happening. Yeah. So what we want to see is at least to see someone bring back the roots and check the results. Uh, so this week was mostly about uh, magic energy and uh, implementation in a logic. So mage now generates energy, spire generates energy and how it's spent. Uh, not everything uh, is available in a build right now from this logic, but I think next week it will be fully uh, working. We'll see. We'll uh, see. I mean, one thing we should energy do is system. It should. It should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. I am a little bit skeptical of promising anything. You know, we'll see what of happens. Of course, there's so happens. many things. Everything can change. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, my Chinese is very rustic, but I can see in the chat that there's a lot of boo, which is not very good. I'll see. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we, we need a translation for this. Uh, yeah. It's just boo how, and that's it. Uh, so, so here's the quest report. Uh, we got back with two items of rune. I think. Uh, each two day more. they've oh. been collecting a okay. couple of this uh, delicious hidden root. Good. Then one, then one. And then we're let's back. Let's see in warehouse. Uh, Do we have it? Um, no, nope. we don't have it for some reason. Maybe the character <laughs> just ate <laughs> it on the <laughs> way back. <laughs> they collected it and maybe they ate it. Yeah, because it's a delicacy, and they had no other. How could they? No other means of sustaining that. 
Anyway, uh, that's pretty much it for this week. Uh, we'll see you next Friday. Uh, probably show you some more concepts next Friday based on what we uh, were developing this week in Constance of Creatures. And uh, on Monday, we'll know the topic that we'll uh, spend on uh, next week. Um, so, yeah, uh, if we're done with uh, all updates for the week, uh, then we can, I can ask. Go we can uh, uh, hmm? I can go drink my tea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll drink tea after this, but before we are ready to answer some questions, if you have some, a couple of minutes before we'll end the stream. What and is then it will be available on YouTube, so you'll be able to catch up if you... If you're watching not from the start, well, I think I mean for us the main goal of this weekly stream thing is to uh, to show you the exact progress of the game so that you don't think it's progressing faster or slower than it is. Uh, you know there is magic in the game, but there's little magic in games development. <laughs> We're moving. It in also small helps staff. us to yeah. continuously weekly or even daily to update the build and to always be like you know some synchronization logic art build it so gives us some responsibility because yes. you cannot say later you have to do it for the friday stream uh the other thing that we're gonna work on next week for sure is localization right now there's a lot of uh things missing and next week we aim to have Chinese, Japanese, German, Russian, and English um, translations of at least some basic stuff already in the game. Uh, some of the uh, interface and maybe even content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's time to start doing this. And we're, we're sure there'll be some mistakes in certain parts. So we'll, we'll be happy to get some feedback on whether or not some things make sense. But names of all the minerals and all that stuff, it should be already coming into the game next week um, oh there's a there's a there's some salt i think there's <laughs> some salt there in the middle of nowhere perfect ingredient for our food i hope they don't eat it uh, it's a pretty straightforward walk also you know mm. straight through the hills yes <laughs> it looks right now it looks to me like a train game you know it's not mm -hmm. it's not it's not train a foot wally. it's not a yeah yeah it's not a feet path it's not a <laughs> walking path right it's more like uh also this this icon moves backwards <laughs> like sitting it's on it's the a train. magic walk it's a moon walk it's a moon yeah, yeah it's a magic walk sure uh the mountains the question is what use are the mountains so the mountains are impassable right now and it's uh, like a uh, variation to the map so you you're not going straight oh. to all areas some of them will block your way for example forest and swamps will slow you down but mountains will block it uh, if you don't have any kind of i don't know spells to fly or something oh like you this, don't right? <laughs> you don't so they will yeah the mountains also provide certain protection all right because you know that from that side you cannot be attacked uh how are we on the salt we reached the salt. Are we? Uh, they should be mining. Can we can we check the the state of the characters? Like if you go to disciples. Um. I think not. Yes, because no one has <laughs> any states. Okay. Oh my. They have found. A mine. <laughs> Perfect uh, name. <laughs> okay, so a mine. A mine is somewhere. With some s s is, is a place where you can go actually and down and discover some artifacts, but they didn't. And Lots of salt. Collecting some salt. Yes. Did we get it? Did we get it in the warehouse? No, yet. Uh, they're still collecting, so they're still traveling. So you cheated at looking at the quest log of before. <laughs> I am a developer. That's my job. This is how developers <laughs> play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Anyway, this is it for today. Uh, thanks a lot for your uh, trust and support and in, 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 in trusting us to develop something fun for you to play with. It's important for us. We feel responsible. And uh, we hope to see you next week. And we hope to make you a bit more happier by showing you some more stuff that uh, will show. That's ultimately what we want to do is every Friday we want to show some cool stuff that we do. Thanks a lot and see you around.
Thank you. See you next Friday.